Thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, I'm not sure we have the complete overview of everything. I might have the complete overview of uh, what people did or will do, maybe. Uh, certainly not the overview of, uh, of uh, the uh, slime world. Thanks for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. So let's get going. Um, today is Weiberfastnacht. And I wanted to remind uh, the, the Berlin people that uh, people down south go crazy today and certainly wouldn't have scheduled uh, the seminar today. Um, <laughs> so is there anybody from South, South, yeah, okay, there you go, there you go, Cologne, Cologne, good, good. But, but they, can, can you spot the mistake in the picture? Can you spot the mistake? The mistake is, it's a red nose, it should be yellow, because the preferable color we, we are looking for is, is the Fusarum yellow, as you can see in these pictures. Okay. Um, I wonder why you had this association. I, 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 I thought long, very long about the title. Uh, Mind of Molden Man. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I picked the title because I want to be a little bit more speculative today than I, I usually am. I will stay on the ground, but I might only be on the ground with my toe. Uh, so I won't tell you anything extremely speculative, which is not based, but it will, it, it, I, I will, some of the ideas I'm going to tell you today, uh, especially at the beginning, uh, uh, haven't, haven't been you know, substantiated as you usually would do that for a, for a scientific talk. But, but they, they are there, and uh, I have been guided to have these views, in, in fact, by, uh, inter by interaction with you and with Heather Barnett, and by having a, a sort of a, also, also arts and science element at our conference in New York, and that sort of uh, 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 initiated that. Okay, so having said that, what are we talking about? We are talking about a creature which is the giant, is a giant cell, it's actually a single cell that can grow to several square meters. Here you can see it in a, in a petri dish that's about 10 centimeters. And what you see are these distinctive veins, and these are transport basically like, like, like your, your tube in the garden, your water hose. And there is, in fact, there's, there's a shuttling of, of cellular fluid in there, and they transport food from one position to the other. That's how they look um, in the lab. And that's actually Fisarum, which is very nice yellow color. That's uh, Fulico septica or uh, dog vomit, uh, as it is called uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in England, uh, scrambled egg slime, a little bit more uh, civilized. Um, so they are really slimy. That's why, I, that's why they're called slime molds. And uh, they're actually not molds. So the title is actually a little bit wrong. It's not a... It's a slime or not a mold, but I couldn't use slime because the alliteration would have been gone. So, um, so they, they are in the forest and, and, and they live on, on, on rock material. Um, so what we're interested in actually is their form uh, in the lab. And you've seen these tubes, and, and this is one of those tubes. And I'm going to click it. And you see, that's, that, that's the basic thing you see when you look in the microscope. In fact, you don't see that because you see oscillations. But these oscillations are sped up. The, 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 the period is two minutes, about one to two minutes. So every one or two minutes, they go to a complete cycle and they, and they, and they shuttle their uh, fluid through the, the hose. How do they do that? They, they have um, a, a, a muscle, a kind of a muscle wrapped around, uh, which is shown here, fluorescently labeled. Uh, and uh, as I click the movie, uh, the, you go uh, through, so it's, it's a 3D 
uh, uh, you, you're moving through the, uh, the structure, and you basically, if you look closely, you see that it's sort of helically wrapped around. So in these, what, what these helical things are, this basically sort of like a muscle which contract, and uh, by contracting of these, of these, of these strings, um, they, uh, they contract the, the tube. And in fact, when I say muscle, I mean, it's not exactly the same what you have, but these are uh, proteins which are homologue to a, to a large extent, uh, or to, to a certain extent, to, to uh, the, the, the proteins which we have in our muscle. Um, now, Teresa already said, um, how we are, how are we related uh, to to these uh, guys? Um, you can see here the slime mold. And actually, does somebody have a, a laser pointer? That would be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that is, was very kind. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so here are the slime molds. Uh, uh, and, and you notice they, they belong to the eukaryotes, which, which are the guys with, with, with uh, a nuclei. And what's, what's really important to, to realize is, you see here basically the animals, the fungi, and the plants, so Pilze. Yeah? Um, and, and so in German, they're called Schleimpilze, but they're actually they are not Pilze, they are Schleimpilze, which, which, is, which is really a different thing. So, what's, what's uh, um, evolutionary interesting is that, um, sort of, so to speak, animals, fungi and plants have a common ancestor, and this common ancestor and the slime molds have an uncommon ancestor. So, it's, they are very ancient, and, and uh, Teresa said that they, how old they are. Um, so they're sort of we tend to think that sort of primitive, uh, but, but it, it, it see, we see that they they show the same kind of cell motility. They can contract, they can move, and and quite obviously the cell motility system has been invented by nature quite a long time ago. And in fact, it's in not so much different uh, in, in in general in the slime molds than it is. Um, uh, in, in, in animals or, or plants. Okay, so um, I had to look up the word uh, and, and found out in Wikipedia, Wikipedia tells you about there are eight different definitions. So um, I, I guess it's about um, looking at the difference uh, or not non-difference uh, to to other species, and um, the interesting thing is, and we, we, we come back to that, even though the, the, the slime molds have, have diverted a very long time ago, very recent results just coming out a few months ago uh, yeah, actually have, have shown that uh, they have the hallmarks of, 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 of animals already, uh, which researchers so far had thought had been developed by animals, but in fact the slime molds already, already have it in their genome. And that was a, a really a big discovery. And so in fact, I was, I really find it interesting, the, 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 uh, the uh, aesthetic, uh, cool, um, artistic idea of asking about are we not so much different uh, has in fact uh, uh, turned out um, to be true uh, uh, in, in later than, than the thought of this conference, I guess, ha has, been, has been developed. Um, so why are people so uh, fascinated by these guys? Um, I don't know whether you have seen that maybe in, um, in, the, in the newspaper. About once a year, either the uh, New York Times or uh, the FAZ Süddeutsche have, uh, have a feature not every year, every newspaper, but you know, in the in the last few years, there have been several uh, newspapers covering that subject. The, the, the hype really started w with this picture. So, what the group of, of Nakagaki and the first order is Tero et al. did they 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 smeared slime mold? Actually, not, no, no, they didn't smear slime mold. They they placed food uh, and they are uh, oat flakes. They placed oat flakes. Uh, on a plate and let them grow. 
uh, and let the slime mold uh, place the slime mold in, 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 at a central outflag and let them grow. And uh, over a period of uh, actually 26 hours, you can see the slime mold grows. It has a no, sorry, sorry, it starts here. Uh, uh, it grows. It has this growth front. It covers everything, and then actually it goes away. And at the end, all the different oat flakes are connected. Uh, now, why is this so 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 amazing? Well, the, the oat flakes are pointed, uh, are located at the p position of. Uh, uh, towns uh, near Tokyo, and so what the, what the slime mold recreated is, 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 the, is, the, is the map, is the Tokyo map uh, of, of railway station in, in Japan. So that's quite amazing. Um, so why can't he do that? Well, because he wants to have a robust system, he wants to have uh, sorry, the, 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 yeah, he wants to have a robust system, and he wants to minimize the distances to shuttle food. And that's what you, as a railway engineer, also want to do. You know, you want to don't make twice the distance, and you want to have a robust thing. And so, the two the important important parameters um, are the same. And so, you know, basically that's why the slime mode mimics uh, the uh, the railway system. Uh, then that is a work by uh, the um, Sydney group where they show if you give the slime mold uh, a choice of uh, food where there's a different, certain ratio of protein to carbohydrates, it always picks the one he wants uh, very, very, very quickly and efficiently with, with a high probability. Um, this data shows that, um, so here you say, you see this, they, they let the, the slime mold move and they record the speed. Uh, and at certain intervals, they shine very, very strong light on it. Uh, and then it doesn't like light, so it stops moving. On each time they shine the light, they stop moving. And then the fourth time, actually, uh, they don't shine light, but the, the slime all thinks, oops, it's going to be very bright again, so I, I better slow down. So he, he, he has anticipated that. Uh, there, my first critique is anticipate is a humanoid word, um, and as a physicist, it doesn't really anticipate it. it, it, it I mean, the, the frequency gets entrained in the system, and and um, and then it, uh, it 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 picks up that frequency. But you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's a matter of how how you look at it. Well, and. Uh, at the end of the day, they are very beautiful. Um, and so, um, we, we tend to think that, okay, we can do this, we can pick that, uh, we anticipate events. So, it, it, in the literature has said, or the, the newspapers, a lot of it, slime are intelligent, intelligent being. I, I'd, I'd rather wouldn't like to call them intelligent. They are seemingly intelligent. They, they solve, from my point of view, very complex problems because they evolved by, by, by fitness in a, cer in a certain way to, to, to have their habitat, but they are not intelligent, but, but, they, but they are pretty, pretty smart, let's, let, let's put it this way. Okay, so, but, but, but still, they, they, they do all these problems we also have to do, so you ask yourself, well, how do they actually actually do that? Um, and and so these brainless blobs, and that's another thing. I mean, they, they solve these complex problems, um, and in fact, these slime molds don't have a brain. You know, they don't even have a nervous system. Okay, no nerves, right? So it's even that's just just cell. But they have these hydro these hoses which oscillate and. Uh, um, so maybe maybe this has something to do with that, and uh, so the idea is maybe the way they they do calculation on these networks has at some point something to do with how we do calculations on our networks. So here you have the you have the the keyboard network, and I use network in a very general sense. Uh, there's a neural network. Uh, you're going to see friendship networks, and there is 
a network of these tubes. And in an abstract way, uh, they, they can do similar things. And that's, that's the basic idea. Um, so, what, um, and, and now I'm losing, I guess I'm losing the feet, uh, uh, I'm losing the, the, the floor under my feet. Um, I, 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 I try to talk, talk to you about universal mechanisms of decision making. So the bold idea is, there is a, a mechanism of a logical mechanism which, which, which gets, which is independent of the, um, of the system it's, it's acting on. Okay, so it's a mechanism which can work on different networks. It works on networks, uh, but it doesn't matter which, which networks. It also can be a logical modular network. I can't go into all these details, I have no time for that. But um, the, the interesting thing is, you, if you go in the literature, um, there have been, in fact, the, 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 the Sydney group has, has worked on these uh, food uh, of these foraging experiments. So th they looked at how the slime mode is, is, look, is, is searching for food, and they describe the, the choices of the slime mold, um, the risk taking uh, with the language of psychology. And, and I, I, found, I mean, I discovered that a year ago, I, I, uh, two years ago, I was very surprised by that, and I didn't quite catch on it. But then uh, I talked to a friend of mine, and, and, she, and she said, uh, oh, well, there's, there's, this, there's this guy at the Max Planck Institute for Bildungsforschung in Berlin, Gerd Gigerenzer. He, he wrote a book, Bauchentscheidungen, you know. And so I said, oh, Bauchentscheidungen, so okay. What, what's that? So, so basically, uh, it's called simple heuristics. So he's saying, basically, we don't make complex decisions we have very simple uh, dis 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 decision trees, and uh, which we emotionally, de you know, we, we cannot. I mean, I mean, of 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 course, there's there's other there's other thoughts about that, uh, which I don't want to go into that. So, if we believe this for a moment, uh, so there's a, a a huge body of work uh, which shows that we tend to follow very simple heuristics to make decisions. Uh, and so the slime molds also have simple cues and they need to somehow calculate from those simple cues what to do. So, um, so let's in the next few years check whether there are in fact, uh, uh, we see some, in fact some similarities. Um, they can be really, very easily compared in terms, for, for instance, of retention times. If you, if you look for food, you need to decide how long do I stay at a food source. It starts, you eat it, it gets less and less. Do you, do you stay till it's gone or do you leave further? It's exactly what a slime ball has to decide. It's exactly what a, what a wasp or a, or a bee has to decide when it's, it's a flower. Uh, that's all the animals have to decide, and sort of uh, we are looking forward to, to look at this in more detail. And um, and then when you and you can already see that there are similarities. And then the question is how how do the, how do they come to the same decision than we? Okay, what's <laughs> why 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 do we have such a complicated brain? Um, of course, we, the answer, though, is, is several-fold. Um, and sort of we, we animals, and we certainly do this on a neural network. But the neural network is, is, a, is a very complex hierarchical uh, platforms, and, uh, uh, and, and you go from, from very basic ones to more uh, 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 effective ones. And I think at the, at the, very, at the very top, you have, these, you have these fuzzy modules which are sort of came came about from, from below, and, 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 and the structure of those, I believe, is quite similar to what, what slime molds uh, and, and, and do, and, and that's, I, think, I think that's why these simple heuristics lead to the, uh, the, the same results. Um, and, and, and what's going in, uh, what's probably going on, um, the slime mold is doing this calculation by using a hydrodynamic memristor network. And what that is, I, I, tell, I tell you later. 
No, I do, I do tell you later. Fasten your seat belts. Okay, I, I took much longer than I thought, but I need to go a little bit quicker now. So, uh, I have been asked to talk about three things. I, I, I should explain the research, I should exp give an extensive what I was, overview of the conference, and I wanted to talk a little bit about our arts and science pro projects. That's what I will do. So, we had this conference, um, actually workshop in, in, uh, in New York, which was actually the first gathering of, of slime old researchers since 12 years. The last meeting was in Freiburg uh, 13 years ago. Um, and uh, in this sense, it is, was a rather remarkable thing that we, we all got together and the field is, is, is really rising again. And, and because there has been this history of, of artists working with, with slime also, I thought, so idea, I wanted to embrace the whole community and the community certainly included uh, people working with, with slime mold. So I uh, approached Heather Barnett um, and we, we talked and uh, I, 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 I was very hesitant, I have to say. I, I didn't know what, 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 what would come out, you know. And, uh, but over the, over the, over the time, I, I, I lost my, uh, my, 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 barrier in my head, and, and so <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we, decided, we, 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 we decided on a common program, which basically she, de she developed, and um, uh, uh, we uh, have to thank Susan Anker for providing uh, the wonderful space uh, at the School of Visual Arts, and um, you know, all these uh, icons have, uh, 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 no, yeah. Uh, all, all, the, all these places have given uh, support in some case or the other. Okay, so let me go quickly through that. So what it is, uh, it was an interdisciplinary collective experiment organized by Heather, Nurit, Daniel, and Julia, in, in, together with Susan Anker. Um, the idea was it, 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 it would, it would uh, wrap around the, the scientific conference. So we had basically three Three days, three days of events before, uh, where we, where we, it, it was organized in a sort of a hackathon. I, I didn't know that before, and so basically we had no idea what exactly would we, we would do, and um, that's why the first day is called divergence. And I, 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 I was very skeptical, and um, I was even more skeptical when I when I looked at the list. Uh, so. Uh, there the, the were, I said, how, how in heaven do all, can all these people, they don't even know their keywords. I mean, I didn't know the keywords. So, um, the physicists, theater artists, an architect, uh, urban ecologist, ecologist, uh, bee, bee ecologist, uh, game designer, uh, scientists, but genetists, uh, biologists, Another neuroscientist. Uh, uh, this is basically gear spatial analyst means this is the bike system of New York, and uh, social internet researcher. So, but but you can see if you think about all these, what all these people somehow have in common is the idea of networks. So they somehow all all, all sorts sort of networks, and so we sit. We, we came together. Uh, this was my first speed dating. I never had done that. That's an interesting experience. Um, and uh, so we discussed and wrote things out. You can see behavior, and I don't, and I don't remember what I wrote here, but I... So we wrote all, all our ideas and um, discussed in small groups at the second day. And uh, then I, I, I can't. Go, I don't give in the list. I mean, you can look at it in, in the websites. We, we had um, all sorts of things happening. So the basic idea is w w w was to develop Monday and Tuesday these um, ex collective experiments, discuss it in an open forum on Wednesday, where already the public would come in. So Monday and Tuesday was closed circle. Wednesday the public would come in, and on Sunday the general public would come in. And I thought, 
oh my God, we're going to do something for the general public and don't know three days before what we are going to do. But that's exactly what it has been. And um, it turned out very good. Uh, uh, of course, Heather knew that. I didn't. Uh, uh, so this one of my students run, doing actually some scientific uh, images for the for the for the people of New York. Um, we cast uh, 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 the, the, the this is Long Island basically, and and, and grew the, the slime mold on that barriers. Um, th this is a very interesting experiment. So what we did this wasn't a mat. We um, we. Um, we stalked people. Uh, the, the, the mad people were very nervous about that. And I guess, I'm not so sure they knew exactly what we were doing, but um, so, so the idea was you, you got a map, um, you took a map, you, you walk into the mat, you stand around for a little bit, and then you spot somebody or a couple. And then, like uh, CIA people, you know, follow them, and copy, it's probably not, not very well seen, and copy their path uh, during, during the Met. Uh, so the idea is, in, in fact, and in, in, in the lab, the slime mold was growing the same area, so there, there's sort of there are some of these conceptual connections. Anyway, this was a social experiment uh, looking at, uh, at, at path finding of people in the Met in the same way as, 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 as slime molds would do it. Uh, so, what I was interested in was um, being slime mold. Uh, that was that's, that's a, a social experiment. Uh, uh, Heather and Daniel were developing over the last uh, few years. Um, that's where you and, and she's doing that in quite a different set, setting. You can look at the internet if you if you Google being slime mold, you get I, I, no, uh, you get videos of financial people playing slime mold in, uh, and, and, and uh, having the fun of, the, uh, fun of their time. Um, so uh, the idea is you are part of a slime mold and um, you, you want to find food sources. The idea is can, do we move the same way the slime molds do if we have the, li the, the, the same rules? Uh, so the first rule is do not talk. Always touch at least one of your neighbor or hold hands with one or two of them. Move towards food, which is designed by F, or follow your neighbor. When food is gone, move on. Move away from danger or follow your neighbor. So very simple rules. Um, you will see in a second it, they don't work. Uh, at least not if you do it spontaneously. Certainly people, if you look at these videos, of course they, hey, John, come here. You, you need to go here. You know, you people direct people, which, which slime molds don't do over, over spaces. Um, there are way too many individuals who thought they are leaders. So that's another problem. And I, I realized that, so now what I really find interesting is now you um, certainly don't, wouldn't use students or people to make research on, on the slime mold, because you could do that better by uh, you know, do a, a sim computer simulation, but vice versa, you know, comparing it with a computer simulation, which obeys these rules which you give them, and look at what people do, you actually learn something about their their additional interaction, what they do. So th that is sort of an interesting way of, of asking actually a, a social or a psychological question. So here's the, here's the movie. So, okay, we did two different experiments. The, the, the funny hats, we had two groups. So ignore the funny hats, they have no meaning. We are all one. And, and we make a big blob, the beginning. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna very soon uh, hand out uh, food signs. Uh, and they're gonna be placed in, in the three corners of a triangle. 
And, and let's, let's just watch what's happening. And we're going to start about here. So the first food goes away. Second food goes away. So this is this is the first difference. This mass has inertia. Okay? Slime molds don't have inertia. Okay. But uh, you see that they that they should have stayed there, but but they, they because everybody went, they also left. That's really I really find this interesting. I, I actually saw the movie only two days ago, and we really need to analyze this. But this is really, uh, and if you look at the details, uh, you 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 find certain people telling them, you know, we have to do this now, do this, this and that, and. Uh, So the ideal minimal uh, connection would be a, a Y. You know, there would be three lines to the middle and a blob in the middle. And that, and that has a high acti acti activation energy because people wouldn't think to, to do that. They would have to let loose and, 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 and go and slide along, along the line and people didn't do that. Yeah, okay, now this was me uh, with, with, a, with a danger sign, you know. Putting a little bit, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and about gracefully after we did this experiments, actually a park ranger came and he said, "I don't really, I don't really want to ask. I don't really want to ask <laughs> because because you need to do permits to do that. We, we figured if we." do that in a small thing, we can go away with it, and we did. If we would have come with 200 people, we would have been in big trouble, okay? Uh, so it was really a, que this was a question of size, uh, because, I mean, it was a private gathering in, in, a, in a sense. That, anyway, so, um, so these things, uh, I, I will really uh, continue to do that uh, and try this with students in a, in a, con in, in a, in, in a setting. Okay. Um, now here's the conference, and I go very quickly to that. Uh, we don't go to that. I, what, I, what, we, what we had was three science sessions. It was three, two and a half days. Um, science session was, we started on, Monday, on, on Thursday morning, and then uh, we had um, three talks in the afternoon on science and education. So using the slime mold in, in uh, uh, in, in student settings, or making uh, uh, very cost-effective cost apparatus uh, for, for schools. And then uh, I, uh, we had actually, as part of the, as part of the uh, uh, scientific conference, we had a science, arts and science section, and Teresa talked, uh, Heather, and uh, Natalie Andrew. At the evening, of the day, we, we showed uh, The Creeping Garden. This is a very nice movie, if, a documentary about uh, the, the weird people uh, doing research and working with the slime mold and, and the weird slime mold itself. And I hope it comes uh, to Germany uh, very soon, and I really recommend you guys uh, looking at that. Then we had the uh, two further science sections, and then uh, at the at the very end, uh, we had um, uh, we had um, uh, that on Sunday this this, this event uh, uh, which I just talked about. I think in term in view of time, I'm actually gonna skip. Uh, I, I well, let me say one thing. So so, so you 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 need to describe how, you, how, how these guys move, and, w and what you do, uh, you read the sentence which is written in yellow, the cytoplasm is an active material, so it's different, active, it moves, with both viscoelastic and liquid properties, whatever that means, um, 
therefore, they model the cytosol as a solid matrix that together with the cytosol as, as a fluid consists of poor elastic material. What it means, you have water, you have a thief, which is elastic, and you model both materials at the same time. Basically what's saying. If you do that, you get these pictures. Um, it's active material, and there, there, there are, uh, there's a chemical, actually calcium, and there are different movement patterns, which I won't go into now, otherwise I'm go going nowhere. This is, this is a paper uh, w which I was uh, alluding to at the very beginning. Uh, this is basically giving, giving uh, the, the transcriptome of uh, uh, Fusarum for the first time. And the reason it's interesting is because uh, it says virtual all aspects discussed here characterize Fusarum as an organism with higher molecular complexity than other sequenced amoebae. So it's, it, it's, it's more complex than people thought. And if, if you read, read the last sentence, the molecular evolution of these features, uh, um, notably signaling through, which has previously been considered as hallmark of multicellularity of animals. So hallmark. So it, it, it has features which people thought before uh, would, would only have evolved with multicellular animals, but in fact, they did evolve already in the slime mold. Uh, that, that, that's really something which I alluded to at the beginning, which means that, um, that that's why maybe some of these similarities are, 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 so, are so glaring. Okay, uh, so I think I have 10 more minutes, do I? Is, is this true? Yeah. Huh? Eight, nine. Okay, so, uh, so these are my, 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 my three uh, graduate students, which actually have joined uh, me in New York, also in the arts and science uh, endeavor. So uh, let, me, let me ponder a little bit about networks. You, you've seen at the beginning this picture of, of this network of, of the slime world. And we tend to take the network idea very seriously to, ex to the extreme. We do not take, keep anything but the connectivity. Okay? So the only thing you keep is I'm here at a node and I have a connection to A, B, C. I don't care which kind of node it is, whether it's bidirectional or what, just be co being connected. Um, and uh, that's what these guys do. If you, um, if you disrupt them, you, you, you shake them, uh, you shear them, they, they make very small pieces, and these small, pie these small pieces are like little amoebae, and they move, and they actually move together. And what they make, they make this percolated, they make a so-called percolation transition. Percolation means if you would have sim single islands with no bridges, they would be not percolated. If you build enough bridges that you can basically go from every point of the island to the other, any other point of the island, then it's called percolated uh, in a statistical sense. And you describe, and, and that's, that's such, a, such a network at the very end, and, and, and the only thing you keep is, is the character of the nodes. For instance, this is an endpoint, P0. Uh, sorry, this is a P0 which has no connection. This is an endpoint, has, has just one link. This has three links and this has four links. And that's all what you keep. And um, why is this very much different than what you know from your friends? Basically, slime walls are so-called neighborhood networks. That's like your, uh, your transportation system. Right, see, uh, if you look at the transportation system, they are basically, you know, four links, endpoints, three links. There are a few bigger small hubs, but not so much. What's not existing here, and that's the, the, the difference to this one, this is, this, this is a map of somebody's Facebook uh, uh, friendship. And you know, you have several clusters which belong to certain social groups in his, in his friendship. And what the big difference is, even though they make big clusters and everybody is connected to their neighbors here, there are these connections which go far away. And, 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 and this feature is you call um, a small world network. So basically, 
there's about you know five to six links to uh, to Barack Obama or to Donald Trump, who, who whom you prefer, or Hillary Clinton, whatever. So it's a network, but but you, you can have very different properties in, in in the sense how they are connected, um, and and the reason why the slime mold uh, can can solve these transport transportation networks because it has this low connect co connectivity link structure like like normal, normal connections and and that's why it works whereas here that's totally different um, okay let's see uh, I think I'm gonna skip all that well, well sort of no, makes no sense um, to embark on that. Let, let me circle in on, on, on the last three slides. Uh, foraging uh, under starvation. So these, these percolation transition, these networks, they, they do if they have lots of food. Um, and, and, you, and, and you might remember we, we start from such a, you know, some, something like three millimeter uh, inoculated uh, uh, Microplasmodia. So these are these are these little slime molds, you know, uh, cut apart. And if they are really starved, they don't make a network right away. They um, they send out scouts. They're really hungry. They're about to go into starvation uh, in, in in the dormant mode. And just before they do that, they say, "Okay, let's check out our environment." And they send out these satellites. And that's how it looks. Okay, so we, we analyze this. You have an idea about crowding and uh, optimal. Opti you ask yourself, in, in what configuration do you optimally search your environment? And when you do that, you come up with actually you come up with sort of a scaling relation, which tells you how many satellites you form, and and and, and the number of satellites is related uh, in a quantitative way to the coverage you have. And. Um, in view of having allowing questions, I think I, I, I stop here. <laughs>